All right, now let us put our hands together to welcome our webinar's MC, Gladys Ya. Thank you so much, every team. Good evening, everyone. First, I would like to thank EVG Network and my upline for introducing Elite Career into my life. I'm Gladys. It's my privilege to be tonight MC. I would like to thank all of, all of you for taking your time to join us this evening. Before we begin, our AV team already muted the Zoom apps to prevent any interruption to the meeting. So later on, we will have a Q&A session. If you have any question, you can unmute to voice up your question. But if you do not wish to mark on your mic, you may use the chat function to type in your question. There will be pictures displayed during the presentation. If, it, if you are using a phone and can see clearly, you may zoom in for a clearer view. I believe that recent pandemic affected some of us to gain so much weight as most of the time work from home. In the home setting, we want to have less contact with people, especially during lockdown period. We arrange food delivery and even grocery to help us to settle meal issue at home. When allowed to go back to work, some of us realized that our clothes are unable to fit in and it's so tight, still can't even breathe due to gain so much weight. We are so worried and try out different ways to lose weight and pick up some exercise. But it doesn't help much and it's so hard to avoid the food temptation. Tonight, it's a privilege for us to invite two speakers to share with us about fight fats in a healthy way by eat right and the pants won't be tight. Let's welcome Jasmine and Joy to share with us. Thank you, Gladys, for introducing me. So good evening, everyone. I'm Jasmine, uh, the speaker of tonight. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank EVG Network and my upline. And I will be sharing on the topic, uh, uh, fight fat in a healthy way, okay? Let's go to slide. Mm, okay. Obesity is a major threat to the global health. And according to a 2019 report by the medical journal, The Lancet, about 2.3 billion people are overweight or obese. So our world population is uh, 7 billion people and uh, about one third of people are suffering from overweight and obesity. And in 2030, the researchers have, researchers have estimated about 3.3 billion people will be overweight and obese. So how do you... So from here, you, you might be curious about, hey, how can I lose my weight? So to lose your weight, you must improve your resting metabolic rate, okay, IMR in short form, to keep your weight off. About 60% to 80% of the total daily energy expenditure is used by your resting metabolism, which includes basic and life-sustaining functions and 20% is used to support the daily activities and exercise while 10% is used to digest food. The higher your uh, IMR, the less likely you are going to gain weight. So to increase your IMR, we need to build the muscles and reduce the fat because at rest, our muscle burns more calories than fat. Okay, there's a lot. Uh, there's our, uh, these are the health effects of overweight and obesity. The overweight and obese person may have trouble walking or even standing up. So this will cause them the lack of self-confidence and will lead to a low quality of life. And overweight and obesity uh, will definitely impair our immune functions and increase the risk of severe disease. Okay, obesity affects our immune system for sure. Okay. People who have overweight and obesity compared to those with healthy weight has 40% higher to suffer from the cardiovascular disease, 60% to 120% to suffer from diabetes, kidney and liver disease, 10% higher to suffer from cancer, 20% higher to suffer from the respiratory related disease and 37% higher to suffer from asthma and 26% higher to suffer from allergy and other diseases like Alzheimer's disease, osteoarthritis, and et cetera, okay? Okay, so how do you know if you are obese? 
it's very simple and easy just to calculate your body mass index by using this formula, okay? So to see if your weight is healthy or not, just calculate your BMI. For example, if your weight is 70 kilogram and your height is 165 centimeter, your BMI is 25.7. So you are in the overweight category. So uh, you guys can just calculate your BMI right now and type your answer into the chat box to see if you are underweight, healthy, overweight, or obese, okay? Okay, uh, uh, the health risk of obesity, uh, including easily exhausted, and the obese people will have uh, difficulty in walking and sensitive skin, sweat easily and order, and they might have trouble to find the clothes that fit their body size, and difficulty fitting in bus and plane seats, lose confidence, and also the serious illness such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, liver disease, osteoarthritis, and allergy. Okay, so people who want to lose weight, sometimes they will use the improper weight loss methods. Uh, the first one is the diet drugs, uh, inclu uh, including caffeine, effed drug, in Chinese we call it ma huang, and laxative, diuretics, and some certain traditional Chinese medicine slinging teas. And the common side effects includes irregularities in heart rate, increased blood pressure, dizziness and headache, insomnia, nervousness, menstrual disorders, stomach pain and flatulence, organ failure, leakage of all these two, cramps and death. And the second improper weight loss methods is high protein diets. It means that there's no carbohydrates in your diet, only animal-based food in your meal. So there's a lot of risks, they include nausea, fatigue, hypotension, bad breath, ketosis, coronary heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancer, uric acid, gout, osteoporosis, kidney stones, uh, and uh, as well as death. And the third improper weight loss is weight loss method is all fruit diet. It means that only the diet contains only fruits. Uh, as known as fruits only diet, it does not provide enough nutrition to our body and uh, uh, prolonged malnutrition uh, will cause, will weaken our immunity and lead to illnesses. And the high sugar and calories fruits such as bananas, durians, mango, lychee, and longan um, not beneficial, that's not beneficial for our uh, body health and weight loss. And the next one is the vegetarian diet. Vegetarian diet is often fried for taste and the vegetable oils uh, is high in calories. Excessive intake will lead to weight gain. And the vegetarian food are highly processed and contain chemicals, active and preservatives that are not good for our body health, okay? So in conclusion, we know that improper dieting will cause excessively suppressing appetite, and the unbalanced nutrition will weaken our immunity, harming our stomach, slow down, uh, uh, slow down the metabolism, and will lead to the anorexia, lack of energy, and low rated. So we have to use the proper way to lose our weight. It's very easy, just, just by using the calorie calculation. And for meal, the calorie requirements daily for meal is 2,000 kilocal, and for female is uh, 1,800 kilocalories per day. And to if you want to lose one kilogram per week, the calorie intake daily for meal is 1,000 kilocalories, and for female is 800 kilocalories. So the secret of weight management. Yeah, it's very simple, just by using the calorie calculation. When your calories intake is less than the calories burn, uh, the weight reduces. And when the calories intake is more than the calories burn, the weight increases. Yeah, so if you want to lose weight, just to calculate the calorie intake. Yeah, it's very simple, right? Okay, so now I'm going to share the food calories chart um, to all of you. So first, Let's go to the two-piece chicken set. Oh, uh, the two-piece chicken set include 
two fried chicken and coleslaw. And the coleslaw is normally uh, high in calories because the, uh, they will add in the mayonnaise sauce in, into it. And the mayonnaise sauce is made from the egg yolk and oil. So from here, you can see that the calorie is 1,590. And you have to walk around 35,000 steps to burn the calories. Yeah. And for the big breakfast with hot cakes, the calories is 1,090. And for one piece of Big Mac, the calorie is 540. And for one piece of cheeseburger, the calorie is 290. For four pieces of chicken McNuggets, the calorie is 190. And for one serving of fish and chips, the calorie is 850. And you have to walk uh, around 19,000 steps to burn the calories. Mm. Okay, so one cup of hot fish Sunday, the calorie is 330. And the six, in, six inches uh, meatball marinara, the calorie is 480. And the 14 inches pizza, the calorie is 3,280. So imagine that if you eat the whole pizza, you cannot eat other foods in the day. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's very high in calories and you have to walk 72,000 steps to burn the calories. No matter you eat as your breakfast, lunch, dinner or supper, yeah, it had already exceeded your daily calories intake. Okay, uh, so the next one is the one piece extra crispy breast. The calories is 490 and the original recipe breast uh, is 320 calories. And one piece of the original recipe drumstick is uh, about 120 calories. Okay, like what I mentioned just now, the coleslaw uh, is very high in calories, 170 kilocal. And one serving of mashed potatoes is 120 kilocalories. And one serving of cream of lake soup with puff pastry, the calorie is 320. And one packet of cream corn, uh, the calorie is 240. And one large French fries, the calorie is 510. Um, yeah, because it is uh, the French fry using the deep fried method and yeah, this make the French fries uh, high in calories. So one sausage, the calorie is 300 kilocal. And okay, so uh, some people will, will have the afternoon tea, like the dessert, uh, cake, cookies, bread. Yeah, for the afternoon tea, right? So let's see, one serving of Adam's peanut butter cup fish ribble cheesecake, the calorie is 1,330. So when you eat, so if you eat this cheesecake as your uh, dessert or what, you have to walk 30,000 steps to burn the calories. And one piece of chocolate chip cookies, the calorie is 160. And one piece of bread is 75 calories and one piece of tiramisu, the curry is 375. And one croissant, the, Christ, uh, the calorie is 330. And one sticker bar, the calorie is 215. Okay. These are some uh, traditional Chinese pastry and desserts photos. So the first one is the glutinous rice ball with sesame filling. So 10 glutinous rice ball with sesame fillings, the calorie is very high. It's 740. Wow, my favorite. <laughs> okay, so the next one comes to the moon cake. Uh, the baked ham and mixed nuts moon cake. One moon cake is about 1000 kilocalories. Wow, it's very high. Just uh, means that if you eat two of it, uh, if you eat two moon cakes, you will exceed your uh, daily calories needs. So I'm going to share uh, the best way to eat the moon cake. Okay, do you, do, you know what, uh, do you know what's the best way to eat the moon cake? You can type into the chat box, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm going to share now. Just to cut into 10 portions and, all, and eat only one piece at a time, okay? And you will only consume 100 kilocalories. Ah. 
yeah, these are tips, learn it. <laughs> and the next one, okay, you can see that the moon cake, the baked moon cake with lotus seed paste and four egg yolks, the calories is, yeah, it's 975, approximately 1000 kilocalories as well. Yep. So the Taiwan pineapple cake, um, feng li sui, the, uh, the calorie is 200 kilocal, and one pineapple bun, the calorie is 280. Uh, and then the fried dal fritter, uh, sao bing you tiao, the calorie is 450. Okay, 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 this, you can see the uh, Chinese dishes, wow, all looks like very delicious and tasty, right? So one bowl of beef noodle soup, the calorie is 570, and one serving of braised pork bento, the calorie is 940, and one serving of cha kui diao, the calorie is 740, and one serving of combination rolls with rice, the calorie is 870. And one serving of fried bihun with luncheon meat and egg, the calorie is 940. And one serving of fried spare ribs bento, the calorie is 925. So from here we can see that, oh wow, they are very high in calories uh, because of the cooking method. Uh, they use a lot of, uh, plenty of oil to cook them. So they are high in calories. And after we eat them, we have to walk uh, around 20,000 steps, yeah, to burn the calories. So um, you have to think it before you eat it, okay? Okay, the next one is the braised pork, two piece of braised pork, the calories is around 900. And one serving of fried oyster omelette, the calories 370. And one bowl of fried udon noodles, the calories 550. And one serving of Hainanese chicken rice, the calories 670. And one serving of hofan, fan, the calories 710. And one serving of nasi goreng of fried rice, the calories 740. Yeah all are high in calories. Okay, so uh, normally we we'll have some drinks, uh, beverage after eating our meal, right? So let's look at the first one. One can of beer, the calories is 145. One can of Coke, the calories is 140. And one cup of the caramel frappuccino uh, in grande size, the calories is 410. And one cut of the chocolate chip cookie dough milkshake, a uh, large size, the calories are, is about 1,600. Okay, and my favorite also, um, ice milk tea with pearl, the calorie is 450. So we have to think carefully um, before we eat them, or before we drink them, okay? Yeah. Okay, we, we can just drink water after the meal. Okay. Okay, let's come, let's go to the next slide. The cafe americano uh, in grande size. The curry is 15. Yeah, it's very low in calories. Okay, let's see the meal. Okay. The calories of meal is 155 kilocal. And you can see that after we add in the meal into the uh the cafe americano the calories become higher, become 220. Yeah, this is because the milk contains a lot of fat. Yeah, so uh, we can just drink the non-sugar non coffee, okay? And non-milk coffee. Okay, let's go to the next slide. One fried egg, the calorie is 90, kilo 90 kilocalories. And 100 gram of salmon, the calorie is 140. And um, 100, 110 gram of skinless chicken breast fillet, the calories 120. Okay. And 14 gram of vegetable oils, the calories 120. And one small bowl of white rice, the calories 200. Mm. So from here, we know that the vegetable oils 
is high in calories, only one spoon, 14 gram of vegetable rice, or oh, wow. is around, the calories around 120. So, okay. So uh, when today, uh, today, if you want to eat the rib eye steak, the calories is 1,340. You have to walk uh, 30,000 steps to burn the calories. And the Tuscany creamy chicken Alfredo, uh, the calorie is 510. And the uh, meat dumpling, the calorie is 770. Wow, you have to walk of around 17,000 steps to, yeah, to burn the calories. And also the yimi with fried seafood, the calorie is 1,010. So you have to walk 22,000 steps to burn the calories. Yeah, so uh, all I sh what I shared just now, yeah, the foods are high in calories. Um, okay, let's welcome the next speaker to share with us which foods are high in nutrients and low in calories and can make us healthy and maintain a good body shape. Okay, I will welcome, uh, let's welcome Joy, okay? I will end my sharing here. Thank you. Thank you, Jiaxin, for sharing with us the delicious food and their calories. Good evening, everyone. Doesn't it really feel like it's uh, very easy to consume high calories in our daily diet? Fret not, there are actually many foods that has low calories and I'm going to share with you today what these foods are. Just let me share my screen. Okay, so everybody know this fruit, an apple, 80 calories, okay. Orange juice, 1 cup, 110 calories. Apple juice, 1 cup, also 110 calories. Now it's not in the thousands range. <laughs> so for banana, 90 calories. Kiwi fruit, one kiwi fruit itself is 45 calories. One medium mango is 130 calories. The higher calorie fruits, uh, the tendency is that they are sweeter type of fruits. So the sweeter they are, the higher calories they contain. And one piece, one slice of rock melon is about 35 calories. Celery, 100 grams is 15 calories. Chinese cabbage, 100 gram, is 15 calories. Chinese kale, 20 calories. Do you now have a better idea what type of food that we can consume that will help to lower our calorie intake? So actually, besides the calories control, let's now also take a look at what else we can do that will affect the calories in our body. Okay, we'll go through some activities here. So the first one is cycling. Cycling for one hour, we will consume 240 calories. Dancing, one hour, 180 calories. Jogging for one hour, 350 calories. Swimming for one hour, also around 355 calories. Tai Chi, one hour is 240 calories. Walking for one hour, 150 calories. Yoga for one hour, 200 calories. Okay, so do you now realize that actually exercising alone depletes very little calories in the body? In fact, jogging for one hour cannot even deplete the calories from one serving of the Hainanese chicken rice that Justin shared just now. So actually, what other food can we look for to help with the slimming down? Okay, so here, first up is soy. A very, very uh, common food uh, ingredient. Soy itself is actually very rich in um, protein. It has two times more protein than meat, three times more than egg, and 12 times more than milk. 
And this is very important when on a low calorie diet because it helps to prevent muscle loss. And besides that, soy also contains other nutrients like phytochemicals, cancer, uh, calcium, folic acid, fiber, and vitamins. There are actually a lot of nutrients from soy. Soy is also low in calories and fat. Okay, it helps us to stay full longer and this will help to control our weight. It also helps to increase the muscle mass so that we can burn more calories and maintain a more toned up figure. And soy is indeed an ideal source of protein that is sourced from plants for people who are looking to lose weight and build muscle. Okay, so the next food item, food ingredient is psyllium husk. Psyllium husk contains soluble and insoluble fiber. The insoluble fiber will expand in our body when it's consumed and it actually felt, helps to uh, make us feel full for a longer period of time. Uh, this will help to curb our appetite and in turn, it will manage our weight. It helps to bulk out our stool and acts like a broom and speeds up the uh, waste passage in our digestive system to promote regular bowel movement. Soluble fiber also helps to flush out gastrointestinal toxins and this helps to reduce the burden on our liver. It balances our cholesterol and blood sugar and prevents diabetes and colorectal cancer. Okay, the next item, next ingredient that we have is Jilin Ginseng. Ginseng itself is considered the king of herbs. Okay, it helps to strengthen our lungs and spleen. It also helps to alleviate stress and mental fatigue. So jilin ginseng is very good for those who want to lose weight because it helps to increase our metabolism and so we can help, we can more easily lose the weight. Okay, similarly, jilin ginseng also helps to strengthen the digestive system and helps to uh, balance our high blood pressure and cholesterol. Next, we have rose. Rose itself is actually a man and woman's favorite. It helps to enhance our collagen production it, and it also helps to uh, maintain the skin firmness and elasticity so that when we lose weight, our skin will still remain firm. The antioxidant in rose helps to repair and revitalize our skin. Research have also shown that rose helps to slow down aging and replenish the skin moisture. It helps to prevent wrinkles and our skin from sagging. At the same time, rose also helps to improve blood circulation. The very many benefits of rose. Yeah? Okay. Next, we have Horton. Our liver and heart actually love this superfood because it can help to nourish the liver very well. Because our liver also helps to help us to burn fat, so the liver if it's not functioning properly, we might not be able to see the slimming result either through a lesser food consumption or increasing our exercise volume. So actually, Horton can help to cleanse and protect our liver, preventing atherosclerosis, and it helps to cleanse our blood. Horton itself also helps to lower our blood uh, lower our bad cholesterol and maintain a smooth blood flow. This helps to regulate our blood pressure and prevent cancer. Next, we have Hovinia dalsis, also known as the oriental raisin tree. This helps to strengthen the liver detoxification and strengthen the ADH and ALDH enzyme to increase alcohol metabolism. Because as we saw just now, alcohol can also be very fattening. So with oriental raisin tree, it can actually help to increase the alcohol metabolism. And also because some food that we eat may also contain alcohol and increase the risk of damaging our liver, heart, brain, and weakening our immune system. So Hovina dalsis is actually very good to nourish our immune system, help us to obtain a better sleeping result. So besides the superfood that I've mentioned, here are also some of uh, the sleeping tips that I want to share with you. We can actually drink more water and eat 
higher fiber fruits before having our meal. This gives us a sense of satiety so that we can better control our calorie intake. We can also drink soup first, right, before carrying on to the main course. And uh, of course, having enough sleep is also very important so that the body can function properly and burn calories. And lastly, when we are cooking, we can opt for the lesser oil because each spoonful of oil contains very high calories of 120 calories, uh, just one spoonful. Yeah. So um, not forgetting that what we actually want through having a good uh, weight management is to attain good health. So we have to remember that there are actually four factors for good health. Having sufficient sleep and rest means about six to eight hours of sleep every day. Also having regular exercise, it can, we can incorporate it into our daily routine, like walking, deep breathing. This will help to enhance the lymphatic circulation. And doing something every day that will make ourselves or people around us feel happy and smile more will actually strengthen our immune system as well. So help to maintain a stable emotion. Okay, lastly, having balanced nutrition is essential through consuming more fruits and vegetables. With all these four factors in play, we can ensure a very good health. And with the information that I've shared earlier, we can maintain a healthy weight easily as well and be rewarded with a healthy body at the same time. So with that, I end my sharing here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jasmine and Joy Lim for their wonderful sharing. Through both of their sharing, we understand that the dangers of obesity and improper weight loss method bring harms to our health. Thus, we need to choose an effective and safe slimming way to lose weight by calculate calories intake daily. At the same time, we need to have sufficient sleep and rest, regular exercise, maintain stable emotions, and take a balanced nutrient. Have anyone true nutritional emotions product that brings back the health? The answer is yes. Darren will share with us about his friend Justin's product testimonial on how he effectively slim and recovers from bad breath, feeling lethargic and mood swing due to ketogenic diet. Let's welcome Darren. Thank you, MC. Let me introduce myself again. I'm Darren, and I'll be sharing the product testimony of a friend. My friend's name is Justin, and Justin used to exercise regularly and even watch and follow through various bodybuilding YouTube channels routinely for bodybuilding and slimming purposes. So he used to exercise routinely for uh, one hour every morning before work and would consume casein and whey protein drinks, hoping to increase his muscle mass. His daily meals used to involve around consuming lots of low carb and high protein animal-based food, such as animal meat from chicken, pork, etc., and very little rice and vegetables. This is similar to a ketogenic uh, diet, so with this earlier mentioned exercise and diet routine, Justin actually managed to lose some weight, but he also paid a very high price for it. So what happened is that he suffered from bad breath, feeling lethargic every day, as well as having mood swing. So he also seems to be getting infected by you know, cold and flu more often. And he attributed this to the ketogenic diet that he was on. <clears throat> so now when, when I heard about this, I actually felt quite sorry for him for what he has to go through because I had this experience before for this bad breath issue uh, once a uh, very long time ago, about 15 years ago when I was doing night shift, a uh, night shift job and uh, actually have lack of sleep as well. <clears throat> so this is actually more damaging in terms of psychologically, psychologically wise than more uh, than physical wise. <clears throat> and it can be very, very depressing. So anyway, sometime later, he was being introduced to nutritional immunology and nutritional immunology food products. He then replaced his protein drinks and ketogenic diet with nutritional immunology food products and daily balanced diet. So with more understanding on nutritional immunology, he also realized that the protein drink that he used to drink are isolate. So that means it's actually an extracted protein. It's not wholesome and with harmful additive and preservative added. 
So since then, the daily protein has been replaced by elite high protein drink, soy pro as well as soy green. Um, let me show you how they look like. So this is a uh, soy green, and this is soy pro. Yeah. So from my understanding, um, <clears throat> it has been taking two sachet of soy green every day, plus supplementing it with two sachet of soy pro after his workout. So he understands that these food products are manufactured using a high tech spray drying method without any additive and preservatives and maintain its wholesome properties of plant-based ingredients within. This was also accompanied with uh, regular exercises three to five times a week. So within a few months, in fact, actually he told me after a month, after the mentioned routine and diet, he found himself slimmed down more effectively and felt healthier. And he no longer suffered from the bad breath or feeling lethargic or mood swings. Now, I'm sure that most of you will be hoping to see the before and after vision effect, right? The results. So here's a photo of his before and after. Just give me a second. So what you can see here is that he went from the 82 kg in the before photo to 73 kg. Now, that is just in after about one month period. That is a whopping 9 kg difference. <laughs> I'm sure anyone who has tried slimming before understand that 9 kg is no mean feat. So here I'm going to congratulate Justin again for regaining his health via nutritional immunology. <laughs> so, um, so this is my sharing and thank you everyone. Thank you, Darren, for his sharing on behalf of his friend through consuming nutritional immunologist product and adjusting his lifestyle and diet. He wins back his health. Let us congress his friend again. Please take note that the disclaimer, PD products are plant-based food, which are already beneficial for health maintenance. However, PD does not advocate any form of cell diagnosis or medical treatment. If you have any medical condition, please seek professional medical help. Next session will be our Q&A session. Believe that through the sharing just now, you may have some questions to ask. You may unmute to ask the question or type in your question in the chat box. I saw there is a question in the chat room about, does probiotics help with our weight loss? Thank you, this friend, for the question. A very good question. Is there anyone in a Q&A committee can help to answer this question? Hi, goodies. I'm Jia Hui. I can help to answer this question. Thank you, Jia Hui. So first of all, I would like to thank EVG Network and my upline, I'm Jia Hui. So this is a very good question. And in fact, many of my friends also have this same question in mind as well. So does probiotics help with weight loss? So unfortunately, probiotics do not help with weight loss. So let me share with you my screen over here. So let's look at, uh, take a look at probiotics. Actually, most probiotics contain a very limited number of friendly bacteria. So mainly lactobacillus and also bifido bacterium. So this means that it cannot promote the gut back, uh, diversity of gut microbiota that is required to promote healthy weight loss. So there is actually a strong connection between a healthy gut and also weight loss. So it was found that a lower gut bacterial diversity has been linked to obesity. And next, probiotics can also do not help with hunger pangs or, or, or a reduction in appetite. So many of us would think that, oh, probiotics help with a better detox function in our body, right? So that's why it helps us to lose weight. But that's not the case. There is actually no evidence that suggests that, you know, probiotics can help to clear our colon. So if a healthy gut is crucial to slim down, what can we eat then? In fact, just by consuming sufficient dietary fiber, it encourages that. So let's take a look at how fiber and probiotics affect the function of our gut differently. So actually, you can see from this screen over here that you know, uh, fiber actually has so many functions. So it ranges from biosynthesis of nutrients, you know, helps us to produce vitamin D, vitamin K, and also immune system training, cancer prevention, and also preventing autoimmune and inflammatory disease, which helps to ease the symptoms as well, as well as allergies. So I'm actually 
I myself actually consume fiber before and can really say that it really had helped me reduce the frequency of my allergies, as well as weight loss and also preventing heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. So you can see that other than just weight loss, there's so many benefits from dietary fiber. Whereas for probiotics, there's actually no evidence that shows that you know it helps to in such functions as compared to fiber. And besides, there's also side effects to probiotics as well. So firstly, it can disrupt the balance of gut microbiota. Although probiotics can uh, contain healthy, healthful bacteria, but these bacteria are only good when they are in balance with the existing bacteria in our gut. But once the balance of our gut microbiota is disturbed, the gut bacteria will, the good bacteria will turn bad. And second of all, it can increase the risk of irritable bowel syndrome, which is also known as IBS. So since probiotics can vary individually. And thirdly, research has also shown that you know, probiotics are capable of developing resistance to some antibiotics. And this effect can be transferred to our body, to our gut, leading to superbugs. And this can actually result in more severe infection and also higher risk of death. And that's why probiotics should be regarded as a medicine and to be that is prescribed by doctors at appropriate timings. And that's as something that you know we should be taking uh, daily. So as Yashin and Joy has uh, shared just now, the key to weight loss is actually calorie control and also a healthy lifestyle. So before I end, so here are some tips for you, you know, to help your entire slimming process go smoother. So the first one would definitely be taking a balanced diet. So taking more fruits and vegetables is essential. So there are small foods that we can incorporate into our daily meals to help us speed up our slimming process, such as soy and fiber. You know, eating high food, high fiber fruits and vegetables before meals can help us feel fuller, so we can eat lesser, so can, uh, we can better cal control our calorie, as well as to keep our gut happy as well. And second of all is regular exercise. You know, exercise is very important to improve our lymphatic circulation. It also helps to burn off calories. So a simple way to get started is definitely you know, walking 10,000 steps a day. This is something I'm also trying to incorporate into my lifestyle as well. So thirdly, it would be none other than sufficient rest and sleep. This is so, so important when it comes to losing weight. And I'm sure you have heard of this saying that you know, staying up late can cause us to gain weight. And this is true. Because when we stay up late, our bodies secrete hormones that actually stimulate our appetite. So that's why we feel hungry and then that's why we'll eat supper, right? And if we eat too much, the calorie intake for the day will exceed and we will naturally and definitely gain weight. So it's better for us to go to bed early and you know, get at least 8 hours of sleep daily because our body will actually burn calories when we are sleeping, which is also very beneficial if you're looking to lose weight as well. And the fourth tip is very simple, to stay happy. You know, let us keep our emotions in check and be happy. Staying positive can boost our immune system, you know, improve our detoxification function, you know, also make it easier for us to lose weight naturally. So sometimes, you know, when we're not in a good mood, we tend to snack on sweets, right? Although sweets can does and does help us relieve stress, they also make us gain weight easily. So let's try to be, you know, positive every day. And the last tip is none other than drinking more water, plenty of water. This can definitely help us to detox because water can remove toxins and expel them from our body. So when our tox detoxification function is strong, our immunity improves, allowing toxins to be excreted more quickly. So as a suggestion, you can, you can drink, drink a cup of water as soon as you wake up. You know, it helps to remove uric acid, you know, therefore preventing gout. You, know, you can also drink a cup of water before your meal. This can actually help us to consume 75 calories lesser per meal. Or if you choose to drink soup while eating, that is fine as well. But I'm not talking about soups that are very oily. Yeah? So actually, all the information I've shared with you is actually from this book, which is Nutrition, Immunity, and Longevity. I hope we can see this book as well. So this book is actually written by the founder of Nutritional Immunology, which is also Dr. Zhao Fei Chen. So with that, I'll end my sharing over here. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. I'll pass the time back to the MC. Thank you so much, Jia Hui, for the answer. I hope Jia Hui's answer is able to help this friend. Due to time constraint, we allowed one more question. Let me see if there is any more question. There is no more question. We will end the Q&A session now. Let me update you on upcoming events. 